All right, now let's read Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. All right, Laodicea, ready to throw up here? Here we go. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Now notice right here that John is speaking and writing to this, remember, representative of the uh, church of the Laodiceans. Now what's interesting about this passage is that you're going to notice that Laodiceans, it does not say Laodicea. Did you notice that right there? It says in verse 14, church of the Laodiceans. It didn't say church of Laodicea. Yeah. Did you notice that? Hmm. If you look at the previous verses, notice it says Philadelphia, right? Sardis, Thyatira, Pergamos, Smyrna, Ephesus. All of these were city names. But you're going to notice in this one, it's Laodiceans, not a city name. It's a group of people. Why is that? There are a few possibilities right here. One, you'll notice that it's, it's more focused on people. And that's what Laodicea man means. Laos, laity, you know, common people. Dicea, it's referring to civil rights. Now, let's put the date on this, shall we? Laodicea is 1900 to, we don't know when the rapture is. <laughs> 1900 to the rapture. That's Laodicea. It's civil rights. Wait, aren't we talking about today? Absolutely. We're talking about rights of the people, the homosexuals, the transgender, LGBTQ, XYZ, XXX, ABC. We're talking about those guys, CNN, NBC, MSNBC, FOX, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. You know, rights, rights, civil rights. Yeah. Michael Lucifer uh, King Jr., yeah, we're talking about those guys. Yeah. All rights, 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 rights. I had a dream, plop, you know. Oh, I... We got to do this. We have my rights. I got my rights. Oh, you know, my minority rights. Oh, you know, the African-American. Oh, you know, the Asian-American. Oh, the Hispanic people. And oh, you know, Trump's a dictator. And blah, 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 blah. You know what churches are? Rights of the people. The cushions aren't soft enough. Where's the music? This music's boring. I want that electric guitar and then, you know, those lights going off. And I want that pretty looking Justin Bieber boy, you know, looks like a sissy to sing and to do the song leading for us. Yeah. And then I want blah, blah, rights, rights of the people. Yeah. Something that makes me feel good in the preaching. Preach. Joel Osteen, Rick Warren. I want something that makes me feel good. Women pastors, we women have a right too. So we're going to pastor a church, Joyce Meyer, Paula White, etc. Um, rights, rights, and rights. Yeah. That's their problem. So that's why it's Laodiceans because it's focusing on people. That's how they are. But another thing is this, is that my guess is that the reason why it says Laodiceans right here is because there's a possibility it's not referring to us. Because we're in the age of Laodicea, but we're not like the Laodiceans. See that? So this is encouraging. Didn't you know you can be a Philadelphian Christian in Laodicea then? So what's important to understand is this, is that Christians have a self-defeating attitude where the world's going to get worse and worse. So because of that, our church is not going to get bigger. We're not going to get more souls saved. All this is Laodicea. It's the end of the world. Uh, no one's coming to my church because no one's listening because this is Laodicea. Oh, you know, my channel got kicked out. A lot of people unsubscribe from me. Boo-hoo, when I used to be the only King James only Bible believer over here drinking my coffee like an Amish person. And all these pe people come in and, oh, it's loud to say, no, it's because you got the problem. Yeah. It's not the people, it's you. You're the problem. You're not being a Philadelphian Christian. That's your problem. That's right. In fact, you're converting like the layout of uh, That's your problem. Yeah, rights, 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 yeah. rights, rights, rights. Being dead like them. But the world is going to get worse and worse. Yeah, doesn't mean that you have to be. Doesn't mean you have to be. So here's something important to understand. What's important to understand are two factors here. One factor is that we do not believe in the self-defeating idea that we can never have revival in our church. 
No, we believe that our church can become better. We believe that pastor, our Christian life can get better and better. God promised it will get better and better if you what? Keep reading the Bible. If you keep praying, if you stay away from sin, it's a guarantee your spiritual life will improve, your fire will grow. So we believe in revival. We believe we can, things can get better and better. Depends on you. But here's the second thing. We also don't believe in a worldwide revival. You might say, why? Because it's Laodicea. The Antichrist has to take over the world. If you think that we're going to have a worldwide revival like the Great Awakenings back then, you're on crack. I'm sorry. That's the bluntest, plainest way I'm going to say it. You're on crack. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Look at that. We got Trump in, you know. I mean, look at that. So America can have a worldwide revival. It's possible. We got the miracle of having Trump in. Okay, let me ask you this question. Did Trump becoming president really make America better or even worse? Do you see all these liberals and demon-crats going on? They're going, ah, even worse. They became more demon-possessed. That's not revival. That's not revival. So you got to understand this. What's important to understand, which is the problem, and I'm going to name these churches now, which is the problem with West Coast Baptist College, the problem with North Valley Baptist Church, the problem with the Sword of the Lord Company, the problem with Pensacola Christian College, and all of these fundamental, independent, Baptist, King, even King James only churches think we're going to have worldwide revival. I'm sorry. I'm going to say the blunt word. You're on crack. <laughs> You're on crack. You know why they think they're getting revival? Because they're only looking at their individual church ministry, how they're building a kingdom. Mm -hmm. But no, look at the bigger picture in the outside world. No, it's not like that. See, that's why we believe in revival, individual revival, a local revival. I can even go as so far as to say that we can get a revival in the city. I can go that far too. I can go that far too. But look, I don't believe in where it goes nationwide or worldwide. There is no way, no way that's going to happen. Philadelphian in the age of Laodicea. That's how we should be. What we got now are a bunch of Laodiceans. A lot of Laodiceans in a Laodicean age. Okay, so let's read over here. So what is he writing to the, angel, to the church of the Laodiceans? These things saith the Amen. Ah, so God's title is Amen. The faithful and true witness. Correct, God will never lie to you. He's a true witness and he's always faithful. He never lets you down. The beginning of the creation of God. He was always there. He has no beginning or ending. So notice right here that God's name is Amen. So, if you're too shy to say amen, I would like to ask you this. Why are you shy to say the name of Jesus? That's God's name right here. We should hear a lot more amens, amen? Yeah, that's what we should. If you're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Now, notice that one of the things right here is that he's known as the beginning of the creation of God. Okay. So this is a favorite passage used by Jehovah Witnesses and a lot of people who do not believe Jesus is God. And they think that Jesus Christ has a beginning. He's like a lesser God. Why? Because he was a created being. Because notice right here, his name is the beginning of the creation of God. Ooh, that's a problem. So in other words, Jesus Christ was a created being. His beginning started at God's creation. That's their idea. See that? No, that's not what it means. You know what it means right here? It simply means right here, the reason why he's known as the beginning of the creation of God is very simple. Because at the timeline of God's creation, he is the beginning. It's that simple. It doesn't mean that, so he started, he was born, he was created once God did his six days of creation. That's not what it means. It simply means that he always is. He is. I am that I am, no matter what time period you're at. At the very beginning, when God started to create things, he is always there. Amen. It's that simple. Well, I don't believe in that. You don't believe in that? Then let's look at this passage here. Did you pay attention to chapter 1 that we read before? So notice, Jesus calls himself, at verse 14, the beginning of the creation of God, correct? What do you think he meant by that? Let's look at chapter 1. 
chapter 1, verse 8. Chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. That's the same speaker, Jesus Christ. Look at verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. See that? Look at verse 17. Uh, the last part of verse 17, fear not, I am the first and the last. What do you think that means? It simply means that God is A to Z. He is there from the beginning and the ending. He always is. He's I am that I am. Amen. This is the same speaker who says I am the beginning of the creation of God. If you think that, oh, he started at God's creation, that's when he was born, then what are you going to do with all these verses at chapter 1? There is no doubt at chapter 1, it's referring to the same idea, carrying the same thought at chapter 3, that I, I'm always there at the beginning. Yes, sir. Now, if they want to make a big deal, no, that's not what it means, then I would like to ask you this question. Then when he says right here, the beginning and the ending, does that mean that Jesus Christ has an end then? See, they're thinking as terms, okay, he is beginning, he is ending, meaning he actually has a beginning and he actually has an ending. See, then they're going to have to say that. They want to say this is actually referring to he began at the creation of God. Okay, then when he says, I'm the ending, does that mean Jesus has an end? He turns zilch? No. It obviously means as a title that no matter what alphabetical order you put me in, I'm there. A to Z, first and last, I'm everywhere. That's so obvious.